pull up that article and say, you should probably look at this article first. Wait a minute, say that one more time about the okay, article. Once it's in the knowledge base as an article, okay. when people are filling in a support ticket, you don't want to ask, you don't want them to ask the question if you have the video right there for them, right? Right. You want them to go to the damn video and not bother you, right? Right, right. So what happens is the knowledge base will pull up any relevant articles and suggest to the person that they read that before they submit a su support ticket. So as they're filling in the support ticket, like let's say they're asking you. So right now I've got hey, knowledge Rick, base. How do I add you to Skype? If they filled that into your support desk and you had an article about how to add Rick to Skype, right? It would automatically stop them there and, and pull up three articles, the top three, and say, "Hey, look at these articles before you submit your ticket." Right. So that way they might not even ask for help. They might go, "Oh, there's the article right there," and they click it and they're gone away from your submit. Uh, form now, and they're on your article base looking at the actual help they were looking for. So yeah, I could like push the plus button that says insert an article right now. Yes, sir. And you can even put it in categories. You can add. Oh, categories. dude, you can you can put a you can put a embedded video in here. I see that. Yes, sir. And you can break it all into categories, so you could have a knowledge base section for each one of your products, Rick. So you can have Skype Mafia Mastermind uh, help section. You could have Skype Mafia Mastermind help section. Ugh. You could have uh, my products like Value Tr You could have Value Trojan. You can have that as its own section and then have like how to use this product, where to buy this product, how to get support for this product, what to do with this product once you download it. You make those all separate articles and then no one will ever ask you that stuff again. <laughs> because they see it in there and even if they didn't see it on their own this system will pull it up and stick it in their face this is powerful here man yes it is this is how you get rid of all the headaches man if somebody asks you a question and it's already been answered in your dat in your knowledge base with an article and a video it's going to pull it up and say read this first and that is going to get rid of all those people that just you know email you every week going hey rick how do i add you to skype Hey, Rick, how do I add you to Skype? Hey, Rick, you know, it's like, man, you can only be nice about it for so long before you pull your hair out. Yeah. So just you put it in your knowledge base, and then you also have canned responses for it. So if somebody does submit a ticket and they didn't bother to read the article or they missed it or didn't see it, yeah, that, that way you still can respond to them quickly and, and without really writing the message. And then you go to canned response. I'm just playing with it now. Yeah. And, and then you can either... Create a new canned response. Yeah. Or edit a selected can see. That's right. And to use those canned responses, you use them in the actual tickets. So when you're on your home page, when you go into a support ticket to read it, that's when you're going to be able to pull from that canned message box that you built. So you got a whole selection of canned messages. But go you'll, build, you'll have, go build it. A whole bunch over time. I got like twenty canned messages in mind. But but bottom line is, for the stuff I know, people are going to ask. Go ahead and create them now, and yeah, save either, them. Well, see, there's two ways. The article base, the knowledge base, is hopefully going to show them that information before they submit a ticket, Rick. Oh yeah. So that way, hopefully, it's going to avoid them asking the question at all. Yeah. But if they ask the question anyway because they didn't bother to read the article or they didn't see it or didn't notice it, the canned response makes it faster and easier for you to answer that stupid question. <laughs> you know? So hopefully the idea here is to use the knowledge base to avoid the question. But if they ask it anyway, you use the canned responses to give them a quick reply to their yeah. stupid question. Gotcha. Okay, so that's the difference between the two setups. The knowledge base is pre-question. It cool. hopefully is going to give them the data they want before they submit a support ticket. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And the support ticket system will pull from that database and offer it to them at the last minute and say, hey, are you sure you want a support ticket when there's this information right here? <laughs> and, and they'll likely click on it. But you have to, to have that feature work, you have to fill this knowledge base with those articles so it has something to pull from. Because if it's empty, it's got nothing to pull from, right? No, I know, I know the knowledge base. I could, I could load that full of stuff, man. Yeah, and you want to make each thing, Rick, a separate article. So, like, 
how to add rig to Skype, how to download this product, how you know, make them all separate articles, and then the knowledge base will be able to find it better by keyword. So when people are typing in their 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 support ticket, it's going to use the keywords they're typing as they're typing in real time. It'll pull up the right articles. Because this would work for the Bothy Mastermind too. A lot of stuff that I have to go back and forth on Skype, even you're like, hey guys, go over here, yeah. man. That's why I set it up for you in the first place. But you got to get into it and start using it to really appreciate it, right? Oh, I, I do appreciate it. I just forgot about it, man. Well, I, just, I, don't, I don't mean like that. I mean, I appreciate the software for what it can do, you know? That's awesome, man. I just... Like, you, know, you, you won't know how great it is until you've been using it for three weeks properly, and then you'll be like, oh, my God, why didn't I do this sooner? No doubt, no doubt. So start sending people to your support desk. Yeah, and and I, hopefully I'm not gonna coffeemastermind.org, and don't let them ask for support on email anymore. You know what I do when I have a I have a signature in my email that I use same idea for canned messages. I just click signature and pop one in there. Uh huh. I have a signature in my email saved that says, "In order to give you better quality support, we have built a new help desk for you. Please." Use the help desk for all inquiries about software, tech support, billing issues, and I listed all that off. And then I even put my hours of business. Oh, yeah? And then, and then I put, this is the support link. You must ask for support at the desk. So that way, when, and I have that saved in my email signature. So whenever somebody emails me asking for support, yeah, I don't even answer them anymore, Rick. I refuse to answer support through email. Because I have to answer them over and over, and I have to take to hand type it, right? Right. It's a pain in the ass. So I just send them an email back when any somebody emails me and says, "Jeff, I don't get this. Why am I getting this error or whatever?" I don't even answer. I say, "Please submit a ticket," and I send them to my desk, and then I let them ans- ask their question all over again at the support desk. Well, that's what the big boys do. That's what the big boys do. And anybody that just sent you an email and gets a response that says, please use our support desk so we can provide you with better quality care, they're just going to take their email question and copy-paste it into the into the uh, help desk anyway, so it's not hard for them. Right. You know, it's no big deal. But you you got to train your customers to go to your help desk. Give them the link all the time, and especially when they ask for help through email, don't give it to them. Say, you have to go here. And then that customer from then on will always go to your help desk, Rick. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And if you're smart and put in all your products as categories, that way all your customers will have an easy category. And who knows, they might even actually buy them. What do you mean? All the extra products they can buy. Well, yeah, I mean, like, what do you mean? Like seeing it in your knowledge base? Yeah, sure, here's some other products. Yeah, I mean, if they're looking at an article on how to use the product they just bought, they might see other articles in there on other products and go, yeah, this looks, oh, that's what I need. Yeah, it's a, yeah, definitely. You got to have it out there, right? So if they're poking through your help files for one product, there's a good chance they might see some of your others, yeah. Oh, sorry about that, man. Oh. This is just, you know, it's just about time management, right? Like this system will manage your time so much better that you won't have the, half the headache and you won't, you'll have more time for yourself and your family and you'll be able to spend more time on making money instead of pulling your hair out over these guys that are like whining over $98. Like you can do a lot of stuff with this. You can blacklist somebody if they're, you know, you can block them from your support desk and, you know. Yeah, that was just too much, man. I mean, I deal with enough stress as it is, and that guy just pushed all the right buttons, man. And he's yeah. been pushing buttons for over a month. And I'm like, dude, you know, if I was there, I would, I would seriously do everything I could to hurt him. When you've been using this for a while, you'll be able to click on reports at the top, and it's going to tell you about how well you're doing with your ticket support. It's going to say how many are open, how many are resolved, how many are new, and you can start looking at things like how, uh, because you can have other levels of, uh, like let's say you hired somebody to do customer support for you, Rick. You could have them in your knowledge or in your help desk here as, as an employee kind of, and have them as a lower administrator, and then you can monitor how well they're doing in answering support tickets.
Oh, excuse me. Um, what was I going to ask you? Damn it, boy. I can't even remember. Oh, just watch the web workshop, and I don't need to be watching none of the stuff on that guy from Pennsylvania, huh? I don't need to be looking at nothing else but that. That's more than enough that I need. It, it's definitely the head start you need, and then when I give you the package of what I need you to present, yeah. between those two things, you're going to have a good start. And don't forget that the best way to make it work is to go in and try stuff, and you're going to you're gonna know when stuff works because they're going to respond, and yeah. you're going to know which things don't work because they won't respond. So over time, Rick, you're going to get a really streamlined sales pitch, and there's no one that can really tell you how that's going to go because you have to kind of learn, figure it out on your own. All right, because this is still kind of uncharted waters, the whole yeah, mobile exactly. apps. Yeah, exactly, so uncharted. I can, only go, I can give you the tools and all the – I can give you everything you need so that if somebody asks you a question – you got the answer. Because there's not, I mean, there's there's just now starting to be people selling mobile apps in the local area. Now, the mobile websites is really, you know, you know it's, it's not quite there yet. Uh, well, that's why we're ahead of the curve. Because, I mean, I'm looking at some of these major companies that have nice websites and they're major companies, but they don't have any mobile capability. Yeah, they don't even have mobile websites. Oh, I mean, mobile websites, there's starting to be quite a few people doing it. But there's no real, to be honest with you, here in Pittsburgh, even mobile websites and text message care, you know, text message marketing, uh, the so-called uh, local ad agencies and the local so-called uh, web developers and big fancy website creator places, there's still very few of them that have actually got a clue when it comes to mobile or SMS oh, marketing. Oh, no, that's why I want to be the guy that everybody comes to. I mean, I'm talking guys that are, you know, like you go to the, you go to these go to uh, meetings they have, you know these uh, meet and greet meet, whatever they call them. You know, they, it's like the go to meetings that you can do around town. I can't remember. And I mean, I sit there and see these guys. Well, I develop websites, and they're, we're five thousand dollars. And you go look at it, and like, I mean, again, you know, I'm I'm not a software guy, but damn, some of the stuff looks really, really basic, and they're and they're ripping people off, man. Yeah. And they damn sure don't know how to do mobile or SMS texting and something that's effective. I look at this stuff. We're going to be light years ahead of these guys, man. That's why I'm getting on. I this mean, that was only about a year ago, man. And I saw stuff that I was like, really, dude? I could get this. I could get this stuff hired out for five hundred bucks. What's going to happen over the next year, Rick? Is everybody that's in the internet marketing that's still making some money at all or making a bit of money? They're going to try to milk it, man. They're going to hold on to the very end. They're going to hang on to that thin little thread and hope for yeah. the best. Well, I'm not into that, man. I'm, I'd rather start a whole new game that might be harder to start out, but once it gets rolling, it's big money, and that's... I don't I 